Hey guys, welcome back to Solo Leveling Arise. In today's video, I want to go through my top five must-have units for the game. Units being hunters or Jinu weapons. Uh, very important ones that you want to definitely have on your wish list and acquire them as fast as you can because they make a lot of things more efficient. And the thing I'm prioritizing personally in this uh, is progressing into getting your gear farming done through both the echo, uh, uh, Encore missions and Instance Dungeons. As you can see here over in the Spider, I'm already up to difficulty 10, only cleared difficulty nine, but some of these important units that are going to be pivotal for your gear farming progression. So the first one we're going to go into is we'll go into Jinu weapons. And the first one is the Grimoire. Now the Grimoire is fantastic for a couple reasons. Um, for the Iron Jaw, uh, which is the, the two wolves that jump in and out, one is weak to fire, one is weak to water. And the Grimoire is great for that. Not only that, it is like in my, in my personal opinion, the best universal Jinu weapon that can be used with just about anything because the way it works is when you use its ability, it freezes the enemies for four seconds and any damage that they take during that four seconds, at the end of it, they take an additional 10% of that, which might not sound like much, but when you combo this with doing a perfect dodge into a shadow step to put the death shred on, any other amplifications you have through hunters that you summon, and then you go straight into uh, this and freeze them, and then you go and you use Jinu's ultimate is the biggest one. You get so much additional burst off that. Uh, but on top of that, you can use any different combo, but it's just a great all-round comboing weapon. And not just for the comboing, but also for the freeze. This thing has a massively long range and it is great for controlling enemies, interrupting skills and stuff like that. Often you can dodge an ability. Uh, you can use this to freeze them and it stops the chain of the ability that they were doing in some circumstances, which is absolutely fantastic. So like I said, this one is just a no-brainer fantastic weapon. It's not going to be your main damage dealing Jinu weapon, but it is the one of the best supporting weapons uh, that I've seen in a game like this in ages. So it's fantastic. The next one is going to be the Plum Sword, and this is going to wrap up the Jinu weapons. The next three we look at are going to be Hunters, but the Plum Sword, just for its general viability, it is a fantastic weapon for just any situation. It's got good single target um, capabilities, but it's also got good AoE. It's got a decent bit of range. It's not too close close range that you, you know, you're missing stuff once they're a little bit away from you. It's just the most, what I would consider comfortable weapon in the game. Uh, and it does have really good dupes if you do get decide to dupe up into it and keep it on your wish list. So this one, in my opinion, is the best damage dealing generic weapon for Jinu. And it's fantastic, even at neutral damage. The only time you're not really using this thing is when the enemy resists it. Uh, but besides that, it is a fantastic weapon. And like I said, this is probably the best one to have as your main damage dealing weapon, especially as free to play, because upgrading these weapons, if we, for instance, we want, wanted to upgrade this one just to show you guys, uh, and it's too expensive. Uh, I, I got a limit break and everything. But upgrading weapons, especially to 60 and beyond from 40 to 80 is ridiculously expensive. So having a generic weapon that you can use in most situations is fantastic. And then a sub DPS weapon that is more supportive. That's just like the best roundabout for me personally for a new player, especially if you're free to play and you're struggling on resources. So that goes covers my first two must have units. Those ones are going to be the weapons. Now we get into hunters and the first one is by far oh, the other thing I forgot to mention. I, I just wanted to touch on this is going to be that with the plum sword it's also elemental advantage on Igris, which is fantastic because we're going to want to push our damage in Igris to go ahead and get higher rank gear and start farming level 10 as fast as possible so we can optimize our drops. Really, even getting to 9 is going to be fantastic as well. So having that weapon, once again, provided it is fantastic over there. Now, the next one we're going to go into is to Hunters, and the first one is going to be Char. Now, if you haven't got Char from her radar banner, I highly recommend using summons to get her. Uh, she's a fantastic all-round unit. She also gets much better at dupe 1 and even better at dupe three. I went all in on mine. You don't have to, but she's a fantastic unit at one copy even. Uh, and you do get her weapon free from the event, provided you started at global. If you started a bit later, you might have to dump more summons into her banner to get those additional rolls that it provides. But you can get her weapon. You can get her. She is fantastic. She is uh, just an incredible damage dealing unit. And especially once you get her crit numbers up, because this, this attack, you really want this attack 
to crit and then you can just start spamming. So once you get her crit values up, she becomes an absolute monster uh, of just a raw damage dealer in general. But then on top of that, we have two key things. In her Jinnu ability, which is her supportive skill, uh, she's going to, one, help him with crits, which works really well with the plum, but also we have the stops them from recovering HP. And then we have her second skill that she uses actively, which can be used when you're doing hunter battles, which then blocks HP recovery. And that is so important. And she is basically the main reason that I have been able to clear level nine of the Encore missions uh, with where, where the enemy power is 215, but my personal power is 104. She is the main reason because she just does so much damage. Now, mine also doesn't even have that great of rel artifacts. If we take a look, you can see we've got some level 45s and some 40s. We do not have, and this one's a level 25. So I don't even have crazy artifacts on her yet, and that is what she is able to do because she straight counters what the um, what the uh, spider, the arachnid, does, which is go up and heal. And she can counter that healing so you don't have to deal all that extra damage again. Plus, she deals a massive amount of damage against it, and she is honestly amazing. And she and that is why I am going to continue farming here because I do have her so well built. So I'm pushing beyond where I should be able to at this stage. Now, moving on from her, the next must have unit is actually one that I don't have. And the reason that this unit is in here is because she's going to be the best unit for Cerberus. Now, because I don't have her, I'm going to once again focus on uh, the spider until I can do Cerberus with her. But that unit is over here in the codex. Unfortunately, I don't have her on this account once again. Uh, but over on my mate Nico's account, she basically steamrolls Cerberus. She gains extra shields. She's a bruiser type unit that can just deal with him so well and mitigate the damage. And when I, especially when you have her decently geared, she just feels so safe and easy to play, especially on Cerberus, and that is going to be her main niche, is going to be Cerberus and dominating Cerberus. And the reason um, that is so fantastic is because even though we do have other free-to-play uh, water units that can be functional against Cerberus, you know, resources when leveling up different characters, especially as free-to-play, is super scarce. So once again, I'm in the situation where, and I think a lot of people are global, if you don't have her, now keep in mind, if you are a spender, I think after you make 10 purchases, you do get a free copy of her, but if you're free to play, especially at global launch, um, you're, you're going to be struggling for those resources. And if you don't have her, that is where I, I recommend focusing in on your daily encore missions over here on the Arachnid, because most people should have access to be able to get themselves a copy of Char. And then you can focus in on here, farming at higher efficiency. And then once you get her, you can bounce over and you can go ahead and farm some Cerberus with that. Now, moving on from that, we go into my final must-have unit, and this is, I, I'm going to say one unit, but I'm going to give you guys two options of units, and this is going to be your main buffing unit. For me, Min is amazing. This dude not only increases, does damage amplification that the enemies take, he does it both, as you can see, 15% here, he does it both as his supporter skill, but he also does it through his uh, active skill, and this goes up to 15% uh, if he hasn't taken the damage. So that's fantastic. He's got damage amplification. He also has a assistance on crit buffing as well. Uh, if we go down here, we can get some nice, um, nice crit buffs and crit damage buffs, which is fantastic, especially if you are using char. On top of that, he has healing. So he has damage taken for the enemy uh, enemies, specifically bosses we're looking at. He has damage amplification for allies, and he has that healing, which can sometimes come in clutch, not always needed, but can come in clutch. Now, if you don't have him, you can always use a, a character that I used over on my Canadian uh, account, which is Libora. Now, Libora, in my opinion, is not as good as a general buffer, but she still does have her charm effect, which increases the damage taken by 15% by the enemies. And then if we go to her supporting skills, she also does apply this. Now, it is only 15 15 seconds as opposed to 20, but it's still very, very reasonable. She does have the dark ring as as well, which can increase dark element damage, which once again, you have dark synergies for her, uh, whereas Min has the light synergies, but those are more niche. Like I said, I prefer Min because he has damage, general damage amplification for allies, and also he has general damage amplification for the that goes on the enemy. So he has the buff and the debuff and healing, whereas she has the general debuff for enemies, specific buffing. Um, but in general, like I said, either one of these two, and you 
you should be good to go for a support. So once again, you do have limited spots on your wish list. So that is what I focus on. Once again, once I've got the core units that I, I, I've got, I am looking for some other subunits. Obviously, she is still the main one that I am looking for. I definitely want her as much as possible. And I say her because I really can't pronounce her name too well. So that is what we're going with. And then I'm looking for more luxury units uh, with, with Choi and Beck. They're more luxury units that I'm looking to get whilst also amplifying my damage uh, with the Plum Sword. That's what my wish list currently looks like. But anyway, guys, hopefully you guys can get some RNG and get some of these units and start farming some of those Encore missions uh, as best as possible. But always, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.